Hey Star Wars fans, how's it going? My name is John with SWNet77.com. In this video, I want to share with you guys my thoughts about The Force Awakens. Uh, quick, just something I want to throw out there. Uh, this review and what I'm about to talk about, there are a few spoilers in this review. So if you have not seen The Force Awakens yet, I encourage you guys to hold off on finishing this, finishing this video, watch The Force Awakens, then come back and hear my thoughts. So, and I really want to open this as an open discussion. So please, guys, I encourage you guys to Post your comments and thoughts about The Force Awakens below. I really enjoy reading your guys' comments and feedback. Um, as far as my experience going to The Force Awakens, I had purchased my tickets. I went on Thursday night, uh, Thursday night at 7. So it was the first showing that I saw it in 3D. I'm going to go upon going again tomorrow. Uh, as I'm filming this, I'm going to probably see it again in 3D. And I'm probably going to see it again uh, next week, maybe in 2D. Uh, probably see it at least three or four times in theaters. So again, at this point, I've only seen it once. So you have to kind of bear with me. Uh, overall, the overall, overall experience, it was cool. I mean, you know, a lot of people were trying to avoid the lines. I purchased my tickets a couple months ago in advance. I, it was right when they went on sale. Of course, Fandango crashed. It was hard. I ended up seeing it at the AMC. I was expecting there to be a big line. I showed up, up around 5 o'clock that night. Mine wasn't too bad. I was uh, They sat us in there about an hour and a half early, which was nice, and we got a great seat. Um, you know, probably for the first I know it sounds really cheesy for me saying this, but first uh, 10 to 15 minutes of the film, my adrenaline was really pumping. I saw the scroll, and I, it took me about 10 to 15 minutes to get really into the film. And that's only because my adrenaline was so excited to see this movie. My anticipation was it was huge. I didn't sleep that night before just thinking of this movie. So what do I think about The Force Awakens? I think the acting was awesome. I think the characters, I think uh, Ren... Uh, Finn, I really like those characters, brand new characters. I really like Poe. He's probably one of my favorite new characters for sure. Uh, BB-8, of course, is a great, but I saw a lot of parallels, parallelisms between The Force Awakens and A New Hope, even Return of the Jedi, and even parts of Empire Strikes Back. So to me, The Force Awakens felt more Star Wars than the prequels. Uh, I'm not a huge hater on the prequels. I like Episode 3 quite a bit. I think that's a pretty decent movie of the series. Uh, episode one, eh, you know, it's Jar Jar, you know, we all know where that Jar Jar, we, we all, most people don't like Jar Jar, but I do like Darth Maul. Um, I think the pod racing was cool. And then episode two, um, there's some parts that the Yoda fight were cool. But anyway, this is a review of, I'm going to get off tangent here, but the point is, I don't hate the prequels necessarily, but I do enjoy, I did enjoy the, the, the Force Awakens more so than the prequels. Uh, there's definitely a lot of rehashing in the story which is, I guess, my only big gripe about the movie was a lot of story was recycled. So, you know, they, instead of the Death Star, they have this big, super death planet, right? And it was super big. And then they always have this trench or you have the thing that there's always a weakness to it, <laughs> you know? But I felt like BB-8 was more like the R2-D2 character. I felt like Rey was more like the Luke Skywalker. Kylo Ren was more the Darth Vader. And I felt like there was a lot of similarities between the characters, uh, but new, old and new. Um, I love the introduction of Harrison Ford in the movie. I thought that was really great. I thought Harrison Ford, or, or Han Solo, <laughs> rather, uh, did a great job. Um, that role, classic, iconic. I was shocked when Han Solo uh, got killed by Kylo. Uh, and did anyone notice this? Uh, but when Kylo Ren, when, when Han Solo uh, first, like, was at the very end, right, with Kylo Ren, he was, he was on that bridge, I thought I heard Han say Ben. I thought he called him Ben. I have to watch it again and see it, but I'm pretty sure he called Kylo Ben. And that would make sense because Kylo Ren is actually part of the Knights of Ren. And that's not his birth name, right? Um, and I thought it was good. I, th I felt that, that Kylo was, is torn between the light and dark uh, of the Force, right? Um, I think at the end, I think when he was confronting Han Solo, I kind of thought he was kind of BSing Han Solo, so to speak. I think he was kind of playing to Han Solo's uh, emotions, so to speak. I think he wanted to, I think he knew he was going to kill Han Solo, um, or his father, rather, which is, which is crazy. Um, you know, but I like Leia. She had a smaller role. You know, the fact that they showed uh, Luke at the very end, like the last two minutes, uh, I knew, I, I, I kind of thought he was going to have a smaller role. We never saw Luke in any of the you know, posters. We saw one bit of the trailer. We had his hand on R2-D2. Other than that, we didn't see any faces or images. I thought that was really smart marketing by Disney. Um, you know, I really like Captain Phasma. I kind of wish she was had more of a role in the movie. Um, you know, this, this Snoke guy, this... Um, kind of emperor looking guy with a hologram. I thought that looked very, very CGI to me. <laughs> you know, if there was another thing, it looked very CGI to me. Granted, it was a hologram in the movie. It was giant. What is his history? I'm really curious. And I, I really think in episodes 
eight and nine, I think we're going to start seeing the, his backstory of like what happened with, with Kylo and with, with Luke Skywalker and his Academy of Jedi's, whatever. And it looks like Kylo pretty much killed everyone there, essentially. But um, I'm also curious, you know, Ray had kind of a backflash uh, of her and uh, with, with Kylo Ren and Luke. And I'm, I'm kind of curious of, of Ray's origin. Is she, you know, she's a Jedi, obviously, we know that. But is she somehow related to Luke? Han, I kind of felt like Leia at one point in the movie hugged Ray, almost like a motherly figure would hug her daughter. Uh, but they never talked about Ray as a daughter, which is kind of interesting. They always talked about Kylo, and she's like, "Bring him back, whatever." They never mentioned her Ray, um, so I thought that was kind of odd. And and at the end, it felt like Luke was kind of um, maybe had a little hint of dark to him. I don't know. Maybe he was like, I don't know. He maybe he was struggling. I felt Luke might not necessarily be on the dark side, but he was obviously. Um, I don't know, he, he, it was cool to see his hand without the glove. That was pretty awesome. Overall, I give the, I'd probably give the movie a 9 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. Uh, not my, certainly not my favorite Star, uh, Star Wars movie. I still think Empire is probably my favorite, but this would probably be, oh, man, it's tough to, to rank him in the prequels or to the original series. And, you know, because watching the original series as a kid, that's your first moment of seeing Star Wars. And, and for me, I, I didn't get that feeling because obviously I'd seen Star Wars before and whatever, but I think the younger audience would really enjoy this movie. Highly encourage you guys to watch the movie again, at least. And um, it's great to see that it's breaking box office records. I think there's, there's obviously people were excited for Star Wars. Uh, we're not the only ones <laughs> diehard Star Wars fans anyway. Um, so, you know, the ending I thought was interesting and, you know, why did R2D2 decide all of a sudden wake up? And, and I, don't, I didn't quite understand why Kylo, was so hung up fighting Luke. I guess he wanted to kill Luke, right? But wouldn't Luke, I would think Luke would, could just destroy Kylo. I mean, if, if Ray could weld a lightsaber all of a sudden without any training, that was kind of interesting to me. And the whole fact that they got separated with the earthquake and you know, they got separated and, uh, you know, they kind of left up in the air as Finn is dead or not. I think he's still alive. Uh, in fact, I think he is because she said, I'll see you again. Uh, but... Kind of interesting, a lot of parallelisms. You know, I kind of figured J.J. Abrams would do this because he did the same thing with the Star Trek films with the last one, right? Uh, there's a lot of parallelisms with um, the Wrath of Khan, uh, absolutely. So I kind of figure, I kind of assume that there, we're going to see a lot of similar stories, and, and that's the case with, with this one. I think this is a love letter to Star Wars fans. I think overall it was, it's a really solid movie, um, and I really encourage you guys to, to check it out again. Uh, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and may the force be with you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you guys want to stay in touch, please subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I have my website, swnet77.com. If you're interested in getting a Star Wars Nut 77 t-shirt, they're also available at chopshopgoods.com. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.